Now the notion of quantifiers which bind variables is a comparatively new phenomenon. The notion of a quantifier was developed in the late 19th and 20th century by the logician Scott Frege and Bertrand Russell. But well before the development of these variable binding quantifiers, logicians were very concerned with the ways that phrases using all and some and no and some not operated. And these are in fact the four canonical forms which were developed by Aristotle. We're going to have a look at these in this video. So a few years ago, there was this big group of people called the Ancient Greeks, and one of them was a guy named Aristotle. And Aristotle didn't have the quantifier apparatus that we have, but Aristotle was very worried about quantified sentences, and he boiled them down to four types, which look like this. Now the semantics that we give for these sentences are quite different from the ones that Aristotle had in mind, and I'll discuss this in an optional video later on. And here's how we would formalize these using the quantifier apparatus that we have now. The first we'd represent as, for every x, if x is an s, then x is a p. And that we take to be equivalent with our English sentence, all s is p. The particular sentence, some s is p, we've already seen, we represent this as there exists an x which is s and which is p. No s is p, we represent as, for all x, if x is an s, then x is not a p. And lastly, we represent some s isn't p as, there exists an x which is s and not p. Now, I want to take a couple of seconds to just address some wrong translations of these that might seem appealing. At the top left-hand corner, we have the wrong translation. For all x, x is an s and x is a p. The temptation is to use the conjunctive sign as our main connective, but what this says is not that every S is a P, but everything is both S and P. So if we were talking about the top one, we would say, well, everything is such that if it's a dog, then it's a mammal. That seems true. But this sentence down here, which is false, says that everything is an S and it's a P, so everything is a dog and a mammal, and that's obviously not true. Conversely, we might be tempted to embed a conditional in our existential down here. So we might be tempted to say, if something is an S, then it's a P. The problem is that an existential makes a claim about existence. And we've seen from the semantics of our conditional here that it can be true if the antecedent is false, which is to say that there are no S's. And that doesn't give us the kind of requirements that we want because we want to say that there really exists an S which is a P, and the conditional doesn't allow us to do that. We might also be tempted to write no S is a P as follows. The problem here is what this actually says is that not all X is P if S. And what we want to say is not not all, but no. So the negation is not in the right place. Finally, we might be tempted to put the negation in front of our existential in the lower right hand corner here giving us the sentence there doesn't exist an x that is an s and a p but if you think about it what this actually says is that there isn't any x which is s and p so then all of these are wrong and the correct ways to write out the canonical aristotelian forms are the ones we've given here